hanging out with these guys, you hear all the shit they say about everyone walking around. So you're you're a bitch, a slut, or a dyke, or you're married. But even if you're married, you're still probably one of the three. <laughs> I'm kind of crude myself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as far as fitting in with the guys, I say I'm just as bad as they are half the time. While some gender stereotypes may linger, it's clear that the gender gap has narrowed on military bases in Afghanistan and Iraq. So 2,000 people moved in? Are, are people still moving in here? Staff Sergeant Patricia Bradford leads information gathering patrols throughout the Diyala province. Her roommate, Specialist Jennifer Hepner, is the tank gunner. Gangster. <laughs> in many ways, they exemplify a new generation of female soldiers who live and fight side by side with men in a combat zone. If there's a standard and you can meet it, it shouldn't matter what your gender is. I feel like the women before me have really uh, broken through the ceilings that were, were set before us. I really wanted a chance to to lead troops in combat, and here I am, and I'm finally getting the chance, so. On the ground, these women have helped create a new military culture. Now the real question is where the porter potty is. One of the arguments that I've heard a lot about females and, and why they're kept out of certain jobs in the military is because of hygiene and health issues. But it's no different than men, really. You just need to know how to take care of yourself. Female urinary device. It's good or feminine urinary device. Early on, the Army feared that young males and females living in close quarters would disrupt unit cohesion. But experience has proven that the contributions of women in these wars far outweigh the complications. And the military is responding with new protocols for sex, pregnancy, and even assault cases. Soldiers can date, and they do. Uh, we do see soldiers eating dinner together. My, my guess is that they, the chain of command, they really don't want to have to punish soldiers for, for dating. I mean, they, they've got more important things to focus on. Some base camps allow married soldiers to live together. That's my husband, actually. Oh. You want to come in? Kind of work together, so I'm going to try. My troops feed her company. It's, it's a cool thing. Sex among unmarried soldiers is no longer explicitly prohibited. They give you free birth control. They give you, I got like a year and a half's worth supply of birth control before leaving the States. And then they give you free condoms. Though rare, pregnancies do occur, in some cases intentionally as a ticket home. I think that females that do that kind of thing make it really hard on the rest of us because it shows a lack of professionalism and a lack of dedication to your duty. One thing that is very much at the forefront of, I think, every female soldier's thoughts is uh, just being safe at night. This is what my husband purchased me for our first Christmas in Iraq. A flashlight that it's called the Defender. You can blind your attacker and club him over the head with it. So isn't that romantic? Sexual assault on base is a problem. The number of reported cases in Iraq and Afghanistan rose slightly in 2008. The Army is in the process of trying to make um, the, the sexual assault response team available to every installation that it has. So that is like in progress now, yeah. These changes in military protocol, combined with seven years of achievement by women soldiers, may have an even broader impact on the ground. We move beyond the discussion of whether, you know, coalition forces, males and females can work together. Now it's female coalition forces with male Iraqis, and so far, so far the answer is yes.